I've had a few people asking about the Volkswagen Group EA211 engine, particularly the Evo 2, the latest engine to come out. I'm going to try and backfill some of the videos that I've done on the 1.4 and the 1.5 TFSI, but for now we're looking at the very latest iteration, the Evo 2 version. The Volkswagen Group are moving towards this engine. They used to have a lineup of engines. The hybrids used to use the 1.4, the 1.5 was thrown in everything else, and nowadays they're moving towards the 1.5 for everything. Even the lower powered models are being fitted with a detuned 1.5. And the benefit to Volkswagen is the simplicity of manufacturing. They're not manufacturing multiple engines. They have one set of engines and components, and it just makes the ongoing maintenance a lot easier. And the overall manufacturing and troubleshooting is easier because it's being done on most of the engines that they're selling. But don't worry, they are still doing the two liter TFSI and many other engines. We're just talking about the most popular engines that the Volkswagen Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda and Seat Group use. The 1.5 TSI or the 1.5 TFSI Evo 2 started production in 2023 and was introduced in other models in 2024. So we're looking at really the cutting edge. Now, the question is always, what are the differences between this engine and the previous engines? Have they ironed out the reliability problems? And what are some of the features that make this a standout engine? Power output ranges from about 110 kilowatts to 150 PS up to 200 kilowatts or 272 PS if the engine is equipped with an electric motor and is in a hybrid. And there's various versions between those various power levels. The combustion process is the Miller cycle. The Miller cycle operates by keeping the intake valve open longer than you would get in the standard Otto cycle. So effectively, you've got a shorter compression stroke and a longer expansion stroke. And that whole design and setup just allows for increased efficiency, minimizes some of the pumping losses that you get from a conventional auto cycle engine. And because it's paired with a turbocharger in the TFSI, you still are able to maintain your engine's performance and get legendary fuel economy. And also with the cylinder on demand where the middle two cylinders are shut down and all the work is being done by the outside two cylinders, you get another increase in efficiency. And they've really optimized this whole setup and they get much cleaner burning engines, they get better fuel economy. And you look at the power figures, they're pretty much the same as previous models and they actually feel more talky, more lively than those previous versions. So all round, it's a plus. They've done a lot with these engines. There's a lot of technology going in. When you want performance, the engine goes into a performance mode and gives you that. When you don't need the performance, the engine automatically switches into an economical mode and gives outstanding fuel economy in that economy mode. And it does this seamlessly. Within one crank rotation, the changes are made and the cylinders are shut down. Don't worry about wear and tear either on the cylinders because they're using a new coating on the cylinder wall to reduce friction which goes a long way to improve the reliability of these engines. They're using variable turbine geometry on the turbo to control the turbocharger. It allows more control over the way the turbo spools up and the way the power is delivered. It eliminates, or I should say substantially reduces turbo lag, so power comes on much more early than it maybe did in the previous versions of the engine. That's certainly something they wanted to optimize, so this just feels like a naturally aspirated engine. Not quite there yet. There is still a bit of lag. That's just the nature of a turbo, but they've gone a long way to eliminating that lag. The VTG, the variable timing turbo, was generally used on diesel models, so now it's being used extensively in petrol or gasoline engines where they can eke out more economy and maximize the performance that we get from these engines. The ACT Plus, the active cylinder technology or Audi brand it as the COD, the cylinder on demand system, it's much quicker, it's more efficient, it has a wider operating range than in previous models. And again, it's seamless. You are hard pressed to notice this system cutting in and cutting out. As soon as you go on the throttle, the power is there. As soon as you ease off and you're coasting, it shuts down to two cylinders and you get that legendary fuel economy. When it's partnered with the 48 volt hybrid system, we're dealing with substantial amounts of power, lots of torque that comes on very early on. And they've really done lots of clever things to maximize the power output by utilizing the electric motor and this lovely turbocharged engine. And you really do have a driver's car. The higher models of the A3, for example, the 40 and the 45 feel very sprightly and very lively with this engine and with this setup. The emission control systems are moved closer to the engine. That was something we've always criticized on the early versions of engines that had the catalyst under the car or away from the engine. And it's very, very 
closely mounted now with the turbocharger and the exhaust. So there's a lot more heat going into the catalyst. This enables the catalyst to work more efficiently as the engine is cold, as it's warming up, because the heat is going out more quickly. It's not being dissipated in the exhaust and the catalyst is warming up nice and quick. It also reduces the theft risk. Stealing these is now a big problem. Working on them is also a problem there in the back of the engine and there's so much in the engine bay now it's really hard to do work on these i miss the days of the old carburetor engines when you had space to have a picnic inside the engine bay while you're actually working on it they've also anticipated the changing fuel needs now we know when we switched to e10 a lot of the older cars couldn't cope with e10 the amount of ethanol in the fuel was playing havoc with some of the early components that were used in these engines the volkswagen group have tried to anticipate this and they've designed these engines with ethanol or bioethanol fuels in mind so they are more ready than maybe the previous generations of these engines are to cope with this changing fuel supply i don't know if that specifically means it's okay with e85 whether that was the goal or whether they tried to exceed that if you know let me know in the comments i'd be very curious to just expand my knowledge on that but i couldn't find anything concrete when i was researching this so with the cylinder walls the friction surface has been changed it's now a plasma coated wall and the pistons have cast cooling ducts in inside them. Less friction means less wear and tear. It makes the engine more efficient and the additional cooling design of the pistons themselves mean the engine is easier to keep within its operating ranges. It's not getting too hot. They can better manage the thermal load that the engine and the pistons are experiencing, even in spirited performance driving. Turbocharger use has become more intelligent, more complex. The VNT has really been in evolved is much more subtle and nuanced than maybe the earlier VNT adaptation in diesel engines, for example. And that goes a long way to provide lower down torque, faster spool up, better turbo reliability in the long run. The cylinder activation is more refined, it's better, it has a wider operating range that improves the fuel efficiency. And as a driver, you now really are totally hard pressed to spot when it's in two cylinder mode or it's in the full four cylinder mode. The three way catalytic converter and the petrol or gasoline particulate filter that they use has been well designed. It goes a long way to meet Euro 7's emissions and exceeds them by a bit of a margin as well. This really is one of the most efficient engines the Volkswagen Group has ever produced going into production cars and really rather than switch to electrification they're keeping this development in reserve so they can meet emission standards allow drivers to have maybe plug-in hybrids and give drivers the option and flexibility of still having a conventionally fueled engine for those longer runs and those longer journeys the high pressure fuel injection system now operates at about 350 bar that's a lot of pressure in the fuel system in a petrol or gasoline engine the injectors have been redesigned generally there's more holes they have more control over the mist and the way it's produced inside the engine to allow a cleaner more efficient burn the ecu has also been uprated it's doing more calculations the parameters it's working from has also been tightened up and the view really is on producing as much performance as you can from as little fuel as possible it's really not been a sacrifice for the driver to have an efficient economical car now hopefully this evo 2 revision will tackle some of the problems that we've seen on previous versions of the Evo engine. They've certainly put a lot of thought into this design and I certainly applaud the Volkswagen Group for taking this bold step, putting so much investment of time and research into a petrol engine when we are so close to the cutoff dates when we're supposedly going all electric. Let me know what you think of this engine. Will you be upgrading your car to one of these or are you happy with the car you've got? And let me know what engine you have in your car at the moment. That will help me to tailor future articles so I can cover topics that you are specifically interested in. Please book the like button if you found this video useful. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined up this video and this playlist that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.